Okay, in this lesson we're going to be looking at the general solutions of trigonometric functions. And to help us introduce this lesson, we're going to be filling out this table. So we're going to go about doing this lesson in three parts. The first video is going to be just working on how to fill out this table, how to get to the point where we can talk about a general solution. And then in the next video we'll summarize what we learned here from this table. And then we'll learn about a, another part for this lesson in a third video. So to start out with, let's look at reviewing how we would find um, the measurement of theta here for the cosine of theta is 0.5. And we want to look at finding a solution between 0 and 180 degrees. Well, to do that, we're going to take the inverse cosine of both sides. Now, when I take the inverse cosine of both sides, I find that in degree mode, so you want to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode, that the inverse cosine of 1 half is 60 degrees. And actually, this is one you could do without a calculator. But in a minute, we're going to do one where you would need a calculator. Now, let's take a minute and look at what this means by looking at our cosine function. So what we're doing right now is we're finding what value between 0 and 180 degrees. So this would be 180 degrees. What angle has a measurement of what cosine, the cosine of what angle um, is going to be 0 0.5. Well, that angle we just found is 60 degrees. So between 0 and 60 degrees, you can see that there's just going to be just that one solution. Now, the next part, it says to find all the measurements between 0 and 360 degrees, which is the same as 2 pi. Well, that means that we're going to have another solution, which is right here. Well, if you recognize the unit circle, that point is going to be 30, or I'm sorry, 60 degrees shy of 360 degrees. Or that point there is going to be 300 degrees. So between 0 and 360 degrees, there are two angles where the cosine of those angles is 1 half, 60 degrees and 300 degrees. And now without using the graph, the way that you could come up with this second value between 0 and 360 is by taking 360 minus the first answer that we got, the 60 degrees, and that will give you the other, the other angle measurement, which would be 300 degrees. So let's look at one now that we would need a calculator for. Let's look at the cosine of theta is 0.6. We're going to skip the square root of 3 over 2 just for time's sake. But let's look at the cosine of theta is equal to 0 0.6. So for that, that's one where we, it's, we don't have it memorized, so we're going to have to use our calculator. So we're going to have to take the inverse cosine of 0 0.6. When we do that on our calculator, we get an answer of 53.1 degrees. Or right, let's just round it to the nearest degree to make our work a little bit easier. So we'll look at this as being 53 degrees. Now, we know that between 0 and 360, all cosines there's going to be two angles that have the same value for um, that first period of the cosine function. So all of these um, values for theta are going to have two solutions. So to find that other solution, so again we know the first solution is going to be um, 53 degrees. To find the other solution, we're going to take and subtract that 53 from 360. And when you do that, 53 uh, when we subtract 53 from 360, we get 307 degrees. So now we have our two solutions, 53 degrees and 307 degrees. Now let's talk about radians. Okay, now a lot of what we do for finding the general solution is going to be in radians, but I wanted us to look at the degree because degrees are something that we're more familiar with. We're not as familiar with working with radians, but we know what to do now with radians because if you think about it, for this solution, again, you want to make sure that your calculator is changed over to radian mode now. To find out what theta is, we would take the inverse cosine of 0.5, this time in radian, so our answer for this is going to be 1.047. Now, to find the other solution, because it's, there's still going to be two solutions here between 0 and 2 pi, to find the other solution, when we are working in degrees, we subtracted our answer from 360 degrees. Well, here we're dealing with radians. So think in your head, what radian value is equivalent to 360 degrees? 
Well, hopefully you're thinking of 2 pi. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the answer that we got, the 1.047, and subtract that from 2 pi. When you do that, we get our second solution. So our first solution is 1.047. But when I take 2 pi minus 1.047, I get 5.236. So that's our other solution. Now that just gives us our solutions between 0 and 2 pi. Let's say if I wanted to extend that out and figure out, well, where could I come up with a general solution that would give me all of those solutions going infinitely in both directions? Well, that's where we're going to use the general solution. So the general solution of this uh, equation will give us all of the points that have a value of 0.5. So here's the way that we do that. We take our two solutions that we have here, the 1.047 and the 5.236. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that well, one, of those, one of the solutions for theta is going to be the 1.047. Now that point, if we look back down here at our graph, so this would be our point that would be equivalent to 1.047 radians. That point is going to repeat itself every 360 degrees. So that point there is going to be the same as that one, which is going to be the same, which we don't have here, as this one, and so on. So that repeats itself every 360 degrees. Every point in the cosine function is going to repeat itself every 360 degrees, because that's the period, remember, for the cosine function. So we're going to add to that 2 pi n. n represents the multiples of 2 pi. So we're going to have another solution, though. The other solution is going to be 5.236 plus 2 pi n, because that value is also going to repeat itself every 2 pi. So those are our general solutions. So when we're dealing with the cosine function, we're always going to end, we're always going to end up with a total of two general solutions. Now I want you guys to take a minute and pause the video, and I want you to find the answers for these last three cells dealing with the cosine of 0.6 that we started out with. So I want you to finish out that row. So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you've got the correct answer. Okay, let's see how you did here. You should have gotten 0.927 and 5.356. To start out with, you should have gotten 0.927 by taking the inverse cosine. Oops, I forgot that. The inverse cosine of 0.6 gives you 0.927. And then to find the other solution, you take and subtract 0.927 from 2 pi, giving you 5.356. That will give you then the two general solutions. So these are our solutions between 0 and 2 pi. But these general solutions will give you any solution there um, on, the sine or on the cosine function. So it'll be 0.927 plus 2 pi n and 5.356 plus 2 pi n. So, so that's how we get the general solution when we're working with cosine. Well, now let's look at the sine function. The idea is going to be slightly similar, but there's going to be some particular differences here. Let's start out by finding the inverse sine of 1 half. Now, in quadrant 1, the inverse sine of 1 half is 30 degrees. Now let's take for a second and look at the sine function. So the sine function, we're looking at um, what values or what angles have a value of 0.5 for the sine function. You can see that we have this one here, which is, when we're dealing with degrees, is 30 degrees. But you can see between, so this is 180 degrees right here. You can see between 0 and 180 degrees, there's going to be another solution. Now that other solution is going to be 30 degrees away from 180 degrees, just shy of 180 degrees. So we're going to take 180 minus 30 to get that other value, which would be 150 degrees. And if you recall from the unit circle, the sine of 150 is 1 half. So to get the other value here of 150 degrees, we take 180 minus that answer of 30 degrees that we got in the first quadrant, and that gives you 150. So between 0 and 180, there's two solutions here. Now, for the next part, between um, 
0 and 2 pi, it's not going to change. Because if you look at your graph here, between 0 and 2 pi, there's no other solutions that we're going to have. So it's still the same solutions, 30 degrees and 150 degrees. Now, there are going to be situations where between 0 and 80, 180 degrees, there are no solutions. But between uh, 0 and 360, there are two solutions. You still have to find the other solution. You still always subtract. So if you have a negative number for your solution, you still subtract from, I'm sorry, so if we're working with a negative number, when we find the degree measurement, we're still going to subtract that from 180 to figure out what the other solution is going to be. Okay, so now let's look at radians here. So we are going to try to figure out, well, what's our solutions in, in radians? So we're going to take the inverse uh, sine. Again, make sure your calculator is in uh, radian mode. When I take the inverse sine of 1 half, I get, um, in radians, we get 0.524. But remember now we're working with radians. We're not going to subtract from 180. We're going to subtract from pi. So pi minus 0.524 will give us our other solution, which is 2.618. So again, that's going to stay the same here between 0 and 2 pi. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our two solutions are 0.524 and add 2 pi n to it to get our general solution. The reason why is just like with the cosine function, the sine function has a period of 2 pi. So it repeats itself every um, 2 pi radians. So again, n represents the multiples of 2 pi. So we'd have 0.524 plus 2 pi n and 2.618 plus 2 pi n would give us our two general solutions for that sine function. Now I want you guys to do the same thing that we did before. I want you guys to do the same thing now for the sine of theta equals 3 sevenths, but only do it for the radian values, so just the last three cells. So why don't you pause the video, hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, let's check to see how you did here. You should have gotten 0.443 and 2.699. Again, you get that by making sure your calculator is in radian mode and then taking the inverse sine of 3 sevenths to get the 0.443. To find the other solution, subtract that 0.443 from pi and we get 2.699. So that will bring you to your general solutions of 0.443 plus 2 pi n and 2.699 plus 2 pi n. So to summarize, and we'll talk about this too in the next video, but it's really important to recognize that between for the cosine function, between 0 and 180, we're going to always have one solution. Between 0 and 180 for the sine function, we're going to have two solutions there, half the time. And for the cosine function, when we look at between 0 and 2 pi, then we have two full solutions. And same thing for the sine function. We're always going to end up with two full solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So we're going to stop this video here. We're going to summarize, like I said, um, and make some uh, more notes. We're also going to talk about the tangent function here in the next video. So why don't you go on now to that next video where you can see how this all ties together.